Welcome to another building history video. Today I'm building a Wealdon Hall House, which is a kind of medieval house. Um, it's really a classic chocolate box English house. It dates from the 14th century up to about 1575 and they were concentrated in the southeast of England. So this house is not the house of a nobleman, it's not the house of a peasant, it's the house of a yeoman farmer. So that's a commoner, someone who's not a slave or a serf, has a bit of money. And it's the typical vernacular style of the southeast of England. That means that it's very, very common mostly made of local materials so if there's stone about you make it partially of stone if everywhere in England's got plenty of wood at this time so lots of wood and then um, they're typically made with wattle and daub walls where you take some vertical wooden poles you split some sticks into little strips and you weave those strips between the poles and then you fill it, cover it up by slapping on a mixture of mud and clay and dung and straw and that might sound like it makes it into a bit of a mud hut but it's actually very effective. Uh, it's very good insulation. So it's made of very local materials, often materials from right around the farm. And it starts out prior to the period of, of this building as basically just one big room with a fireplace in the middle. And then as we get into the 14th century, that gets split and you get these two sides. So you can already see in the build that there's two sides to the build um, and the middle part is two stories open two stories and so the middle part is your main living area it's kind of a semi public room and then downstairs to the side one side you have two parlors and the other side where the staircases are going up towards the side wall that's the where you have your buttery and pantry. So that's where you keep all your food. And remember, at this time, we don't have any refrigeration. So anything you want to keep for the next season has to be preserved in some way. So they're going to have a lot of pickled cabbage and um, preserved fruit so that you can have fruit and vegetables through the much colder winter months and through the lean times and you're also going to be storing things like ham and salted fish whatever you've got locally that you grow or cook collect uh, is going to be in there so food storage is a much bigger thing uh, in this time because there's no supermarkets there's no refrigeration you get what you get um well, you get what you make, really. Uh, yeah. So this house isn't right at the earlier period where it would have started as just a big room with a fire in the middle. This house is a bit later. So this house has had the side rooms added and the upstairs side rooms added. Staircases up to the side rooms. The staircases in The Sims, it really annoys me, but you can't make a suitably steep staircase in The Sims. Um, for this period, these staircases are just too way too wide and way too long. Um, I would expect them to be a lot more, have a lot more in common with a ladder than they would with a modern safety compliant staircase. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of a limitation of The Sims. I look forward to at some point in The Sims getting spiral staircases so this becomes less of a problem. But in the meantime, we do what we can. So 
this house has been adapted also because it has a fireplace. I don't think I've built that yet, but I put the chimney on top, which indicates you're going to get a fireplace. Now, you're not going to get fireplaces put in really until the end of the 16th, start of the 17th century. Um, brick had been invented before then, but of course, as all these technologies start out as something available to the rich and famous, and then trickle down through the middle classes to to the lower classes. Um, in fact, brick didn't really reach the lower classes until the 20th century. Lots of uh, lots of country farmers would have lived in wattle and daub and stone built houses well into the 20th century. So. This is a bit fancy. It's got that that real fireplace in it. And it's also got something that is definitely very expensive for the time, which is glass in the windows. I think you really have to imagine that, except for the coloured glass in the windows, these windows would be no glass. They'd just be open. Um, this means that they'd be fairly small holes in them you're not going to have big open expanses because that's going to let in birds and bugs and people so they're going to be fairly well split up the other thing you'll notice that that means for a house is that you're going to be spending a lot more time outside I mean during the day this is a farmer's house so there are probably some people working inside the house spinning or cleaning or cooking but a lot of the work of a farm is going on outside. So farming animals, looking after chickens, pigs, cows, and growing barley, beans. Those are kind of the big cash crops of the time. Um, so this farmer probably grew a variety of different things because diversity is how you don't starve if one of your crops fails. And also you need to grow different things in different seasons, which is obviously still true today. The other thing to remember about, especially about animals, is that animals have changed a lot since 1575. They, at the time, if you were farming pigs, pigs had a, a lot more in common with a wild boar than you would think of today. A pig was not a friendly animal. So it's quite a different, quite different animals. The horses would have been smaller. The cows would have been smaller. They would have used the same cows for beef and dairy. And chicken would have been really expensive. So you can just see there, I tried to fit a fire in because I thought I'd make it in the oldest style with an open fire, but you really can't fit any of the Sims fires in the house. So I put in the fireplace instead, which was kind of sad. I'd really like to do one with an open fire, but it doesn't really work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So th there's got to be a few concessions to what you can actually build in The Sims, which makes me a bit sad. And now I'm trying to fit a stove inside the fireplace. Watch me forget the code to turn move objects on. Hello. Ugh. Anyway, here we go. Finally got move objects on. Yeah. So I'm using the move objects cheat in this build quite a bit. Normally for a functional build, I find that's not a good idea. It's really hard to then see what is going to be safe and what is not going to work in a Sims build. But when you're kind of trying to make do with what the Sims has, it's much easier if you turn the cheat on. It just gives you a lot more options for messing around with things. Um, it, it lets you kind of cobble together ideas uh, to sort of represent things rather than having to worry about how things would actually have looked. So with this garden, I'm trying to get across the idea a bit that it is a working garden. So 
there's no apple trees in The Sims 4. Uh, these farmers would have had, almost certainly have had apple trees. You want to grow cider, that's very important. Um, even into the 19th century, farm workers would have been paid in, part paid in cider. Uh, so it's definitely an important thing to have. And the other thing you have a lot of is garden space. So yes, you are could buy vegetables at the market, but the easiest thing to do is to grow them yourself. So growing beets and growing peas and kale and spinach and all those kind of green leafy vegetables very important because they don't keep very well but they're very important for getting plenty of vitamin c not that medieval people knew what vitamin c was but they did know that winter sickness where you didn't have any fresh vegetables was definitely a thing um so you want a nice garden because any spare of your cash crop so any spare peas any spare barley any spare wheat if you're growing wheat that's going towards your rent and your tithes and taxes maybe some of it is being spent on getting things like new cooking pans or getting uh, a nicer tools for making thread or something like that you're not you're not going to have a lot of spare money for going out and buying food or any luxuries. So the more that you can make, the better. Uh, in this time, people are often going to be making their own beer. They're going to be making pretty much all their own food. They might be buying bread from the town baker. But otherwise, it's, it's what you make at home. Um, so here I'm trying to fit in a dining table and a dining room. So a wheeled and hall house, another thing about it is that it's kind of a miniature version of the upper classes of older years, uh, of prior generations, which if you think about it, makes sense, right? Today, there's these big fancy houses and then people who have less money, want to build something similar but a bit smaller and a bit more on budget so in this house if this had been a lord of the manor house it would have been you know double the size three times the size but have had a very similar layout with the parlors and the buttery and the pantry and the hall but in this case the hall is going to have space for just the family and the workers, which in this period could be, it could be a family of 12 or 14. It could be a smaller family with more paid workers. It's really going to vary depending on what they're farming and just who's inherited. It, the house, it's also much more likely to be a multi-generational family than we would typically see today so you're probably going to have grandma parents kids maybe even their kids in the same house and you might think that means oh, it's quite cramped but people lived in much close quarters for um, a long time really the small houses and separate living it's quite a new thing for today so the people here would have shared beds, they would have shared their living space, they would have shared chores. Um, so all the kids here are going to be working. If you're old enough to chase chickens, if you're old enough to weed vegetables, you're old enough to work. Um, and it's really all about working. Typically women would be having, you know, their married and their husband's alive they're going to be having two kids uh, uh, I mean a kid every two years a lot of those are going to die in child childhood they're going to die as babies or be stillborn 
but that's still a lot of kids. It's it's much bigger family. So at this point, actually, I'd just like to point out I'm building the midden. So this is technically the outdoor fire from The Sims, but in the medieval period, there's no bin collection night. There's no there's no garbage disposal. So I've put a kind of outdoorsy bin in that pile of wood to kind of symbolize where you would be throwing away the things that you really couldn't reuse. And you've got to remember almost everything you can reuse. So a bunch of stuff that we would throw away, they would not. If you've got food scraps, you can feed them to pigs, you can feed them to your animals. If you've got clothing that's too worn out to wear, it's not too worn out to clean with. Um, at the point where it's too worn out to clean with, you're probably using it to stuff your winter coat or um, to block up a hole in the wall or just to light a fire even. Um, yeah, so the things that are getting really thrown out is very few things. Metal items are going to get melted down and reused. If you've broken your cast iron cooking pot, you are going to be, one, very out of pocket and incredibly angry, and two, you're going to be getting that repaired. You're not going to be wasting the metal. So there's a lot more recycling and reuse going on than we would have. But there are some things like broken pottery. Broken pottery is kind of the equivalent of modern broken plastic. You just throw it away. It's pretty cheap. You can get more of it. No big deal. Uh, the other thing I put in the garden is a well. You probably, well, you wouldn't have had a personal well as a common farmer. You would have probably gone to a local stream or river or maybe a town well if you lived in a big enough village to have a its own well. But I wanted to kind of symbolise that water in the medieval period is not plumbed in. You're going to have to go outside to get it. So I put a little sink in there to, because the well is not a functional object. Um, but open river, open water courses were a common source of water and you're going to be having to fetch water every single day. So you wake up and you'd like a drink, you better go and get that water. Well, actually, you're probably not drinking water. You're probably drinking beer because the water is not safe to drink. But you're going to get water to make beer. You're going to get water to clean, to cook. You're getting water for so many parts of your life. And it's a massive part of a woman's labour at this period is collecting water from elsewhere. And you'll notice that these bedrooms are pretty sparsely furnished. Just two of them have chests in them. And that's kind of because the possessions of these farmers is going to be pretty small. It's mostly useful kitchen items and bed linen and in fact the beds are probably the most expensive thing they own. Um, so here's the floor plan you can see with the two parlours downstairs and then the four bedrooms upstairs although there's probably a lot more than four people in, <laughs> in this house and then there's the roof and the final view. So thanks for watching, see you next time.